morning. I'm hoping you can hear me better this morning. Not so much. There we go. Now we've got some magic happening. Okay. Okay. Very good. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. It's a joint service between First Congregational United Church of Christ and Christ United Methodist Church, and we're pleased that you are here to spend this beautiful getting to be summer morning with us. We've got a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, Tyler's got the first one for us. I'm afraid to touch this one sometimes. Uh, good morning. So uh, this evening at 7 o'clock at Gibson Park, there will be an ecumenical pride worship service that we wanted to invite you all to. Uh, Stephen Underwood from uh, Central Christian is going to be leading the service. Uh, Sarah will be there. I will be providing music along with Norman, and we'll have kind of an ecumenical choir as well. If you are interested in singing in the choir, we are rehearsing today from, th well, at 3 p.m. We have 3 to 5. It probably won't take the full two hours. Uh, at First United Methodist Church, you don't need to know the music. We'll cover it. We'll rehearse it, and then we'll sing it at the service this evening at 7. So I hope to see some of you there. Great. Thank you. That will be a wonderful event. Again, it's at the band shell, 7 p.m. this evening. Um, is the nursery open today, Janet? Yes. The nursery is open this morning, so if anybody starts having a meltdown, small children, big children, young at heart, you can go in the nursery and there's good toys in there to play with and it helps. We also have our prayer ground uh, for children and I'm still gonna go with the young at heart as well. We do ask if you have a child over there, if you would just kind of sit there just to kind of keep an eye on them but we do want our young people here at church and for it to be a good experience for them. Are there any other announcements? All righty. Yes. Forty beautiful years today. Congratulations. Wow. That's something. Anything else? That's a big one. All righty. Today is Trinity Sunday. It is when we sit within the mystery of the Trinity, God the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Someone wiser than me wrote, the Trinity simply expresses the fullness of God as the essence of the Trinity is quite simple. God is love. And that's what we're all here for this morning. We come to church to be reminded of God's presence in our lives, to be inspired by the ways of God, to be inspired by the ways God's grace is made known in the world, to hear God's word as it has been revealed in scripture, and to be comforted and challenged and transformed by the good news of Jesus. Welcome to worship. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here this morning. I rejoice in seeing your faces and the opportunity to gather and rejoice in our Creator. Uh, please stand as you're able to join in the call to worship. Wisdom calls and understanding speaks. Creation declares your glory, and humanity marvels at your care. Peace, endurance, character, and hope are gifts. And now please join me in a spirit of prayer. God, our potter, God who becomes clay, God who shapes us in the fire, we are made new in your presence. We come seeking your wisdom, crying out our concerns, needing your peace. Use this time to form us as community, 
connected through your breath, life, and hope that propels us as your body in the world. Amen. And now may we lift our lovely voices together to sing Holy, 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 number 277 in the New Century Hymnal, the black one. Any children who would like to come for the children's sermon, come forward, and you can bring your grown-up with you if you would like. Come on down. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. I think we have one more. She's busy with her artwork. Good morning. Welcome. Shh. Okay, ready? Now, how many of you, I'm going to ask you some questions. How many of you are someone's child? Raise your hand. You're somebody's child? You're someone's little girl, little boy? How many of you are somebody's grandchild? Do you have grandmas and grandpas? What child? Grandchild. Do you have a grandma or grandpa? There we go. How many of you have a friend or lots of friends? Okay. That's right. Well, that's interesting because you're each just one person, but you have different identities. You're a child, you're a grandchild, you're a friend, but you're just one person. And I bet if you go to school, you're a student. If you play sports, you're... You're an athlete. There you go. So we all have these different identities, and that's how it is with God. We have one God, but we also have Jesus the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. So it's one God with different identities. It's kind of mysterious and tricky, but we don't need to make it that way. We just need to know we are one person with, who has lots of people who love them, and we have one God who loves us in lots of different ways. And I'll let Janet explain that to you in more detail later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so let's pray. That's true. Let's pray. We're going to pray now. Most gracious God, we thank you for loving us in so many different ways. Bless us this day. Amen. Amen. All right, you can get back to your artwork and being with your family. Hear the reading of the word. Our Old Testament reading today is Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and with honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim in the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This morning's gospel reading comes from John 16, verses 12 through 15. Jesus is responding to the disciples' confusion of what Jesus means when he tells them he will only be with them a little while longer. Hear his answer. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when the spirit of truth comes, you will be guided into all truth. The spirit will not speak on their own. The Spirit will speak only what is told by me, and you will be told what is to come. The Spirit will glorify me because it is from me that the Spirit will receive what it will be made known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive me from me what is to be known by you. The Word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. O God who sees us, let the words of my mouth be your words. Let all else fall away. May we each hear the message meant for us today. Amen. Trinity Sunday is one of the most challenging to preach. And what I've discovered is the Trinity is humanity's attempt 
to explain the mysteries of God as we experience God in a multitude of different ways. One of the ways we describe the Trinity is God creator, Jesus the redeemer, and the Holy Spirit the sanctifier. Nonetheless, the Trinity is unexplainable because it is experiencing God in our lives. You know how sometimes the word thank you is just not enough to express the gratitude you feel? That's what it's like to explain the Trinity in words. Our vocabulary is inadequate to the task. Nonetheless, I'm gonna take a stab at it. How does God speak to us? As the, as the creator, God speaks to us through creation. Long ago, we once all had what we needed to live. But the condition of our planet now, I can safely suggest we have not lessened well because of the condition of our planet. A life of faith is a life of relationships. All relationships with all of creation and of all people. It isn't only adopting habits to take care of our neighborhood or our part of creation, the mountains and prairies of Montana, but what are our decisions for the oceans as the homes of people you will never know sink, or their island where their community has lived for generations is disappearing, or the situation in our cities with lack of access to food, medical care, and jobs. God has created everything, yet our mindset has been on what is ours. God the creator made enough for everyone. And as you look at the state of the earth, what do you hear? Do you hear the earth crying out for mercy? I was struck during the global lockdown in the early days of the pandemic when humans were not out and about. And it didn't take long for the decades long smog hiding the Himalayas to dissipate. For the first time since people could remember, dolphins returned to the canals of Venice. Are climate scientists modern day prophets, listened by some and scorned by others? Perhaps, but give ear to creation. Give your ear to God. Moreover, when you seek answers in your life, creation is where we can find the answers, in your garden, with a beloved pet, strolling through a park, or hiking a trail, or standing hip deep in a river. God is there, be still and listen. God, as Jesus' Redeemer, tells us how to live as humans in a broken world, yet with the division and in some instances pure hate of one another, it is again evident we do not listen well, or if we do listen, we rely on ourselves to take care of the matter, resulting in armed conflict or laws based on fear and greed that create and maintain inequity, inequity among us. A life of faith is a life of relationships. All relationships with all of creation and all people. You will never look into the eyes of someone who is not a child of God. Regardless of how they look, their physical ability, whether they are from a ghetto or a palace or who they love, you will never look into the eyes of someone who is not a child of God. And we are called to be in relationship with one another with the command, not the suggestion, with the command of love one another. And what are we to do with that? Look to Jesus' life and teachings. Then be still and listen. The spirit is the greatest mystery as it is not tangible nor quantifiable. The Holy Spirit as sanctifier. Sanctify means to make holy, to change our love of things of this world to desiring God, to desiring the love and peace and good that is God. The Holy Spirit is real as that inner prompting or sense of calm or warning we often feel rather than hear. I don't know how theologically correct this is or accurate, 
But if you are prompted within yourself to act justly, to take the right action, whether it is popular or not, noticed or not, I suggest that is God as a Holy Spirit who is speaking to you to act. Especially if it's contrary to what the world tells you or in contradiction to the world's idea of how to conduct ourselves. When we are prompted to be kind, to love, I suggest that is the Holy Spirit because God is love. God is all that is good. Alternatively, because God loves you, when you are prompted to be careful or use discretion with another or say no, I think that may be a moment God is trying to keep you safe, protect you. Several years ago, I came upon a man lying in my alley here in Great Falls. Instinctively, I went to help him when I had the strongest, even loud sense in my head that I was in danger and to stop, which I did, sliding in the gravel, and to go back to my house. A few moments later, looking out my back window, I saw the man easily stand up and walk away with no indication of injury or illness. Was that the Holy Spirit? I believe it was God protecting me as I had no idea, no sense of danger until this profound feeling came over me and the words, get away, were in my mind. Our God is a mysterious God. The biblical scholar, Dr. Will Gaffney, has noted scripture uses far more than three names or images to describe God. And these names, these images do not limit us to any one of them, for God is more than we can imagine. She writes, God is beyond numbering and naming, and she's right. God is Al Shaddai, the great provider. God is Al Wakil, the guardian. God is Emmanuel. God is with us. The name of God I like best is El Roy the God who sees me. And if I could add to that, the God who sees me and still loves me. That's a mystery. <laughs> the Trinity is a human attempt to define the real internal divine relationship that is impossible to explain because faith is experiencing God because God is speaking to us all the time. Sometimes we're afraid of what we might be told, so we don't listen well, hence the state of our planet and relationships. But the gospel reading this morning has Jesus telling the disciples and us, the Holy Spirit only speaks truth, which can indeed be hard to hear, but it is truth, not deception. And as much as we think we have God figured out, we don't. I just finished seminary, trust me, we don't. God is a mystery to our limited minds and understanding. But the good news is a life of faith is a relationship with the holy. And as we progress in our understanding about the things of God, we aren't necessarily ready to hear it all at once, as it would be overwhelming and perhaps confusing. So like a good parent, the Holy Spirit is God speaking to us when we are ready to hear and understand the next thing. My attempt to explain the Trinity as God the Creator, Jesus the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit as Sanctifier is God manifested in different ways to love humanity in our diversity. And at the risk of oversimplifying, what I'm trying to say is we learn differently. Some of us learn visually. Others learn by hearing. Some learn by doing. Some need quiet. Others need loud music playing, Hank. Some need to doodle or pace while they're learning. We are God's creation perfectly made in our diversity. The Trinity is God's love speaking to us all, wherever and whoever we are. 
God is present in our daily lives despite our being hard of hearing sometimes. And may we make our prayer to be strengthened by God's truth told to us as we journey in our faith so that we may claim truth for ourselves and proclaim it to the world. We are told in Proverbs, and now my children, listen to me. Happy are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not neglect it. Happy is the one who listens to me watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. For whoever finds me, finds life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to the Holy Trinity. Amen. And now let us stand and sing, in body or heart, Amazing Grace, verses 1, 3, and 5, and again the New Century Hymnal, number 547. Please be seated. Now is our time of sharing joys and concerns. We have any, we've got a joy of a 40-year wedding anniversary. I got married for the first time at 52, so our ninth anniversary is coming up in October. Personal best, so <laughs> we have a long way to go. <laughs> any other joys and concerns? Yes. A 57th anniversary last Thursday. Wow. Okay, it's not a competition, but wow. <laughs> Janet. Gratitude and joy for the great retreat that we held here yesterday. Good deal. Gratitude and joy for the retreat that was healed yesterday. How did it tell us a little bit, Janet? Uh, we opened the door and walked in beauty. Opened the door and walked in beauty. It was a blessed day? Yes. Good, good. So it was a blessed day yesterday for the retreat, being in community with one another. Anything else? We will continue to look up Lynn and Greg as they continue on their time of renewal. Lynn's got a blog that she's putting on Facebook, and apparently their uh, van has developed a few leaks, one which is like right over the bed. 
but if you, when you make a right turn and you hold something under it, it drains. <laughs> so they need your prayer. <laughs> and uh, June is Pride Month. And may Pride celebrations throughout our country and throughout the world be joyous and affirming for our siblings and our loved ones. And so let us go to prayer. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. We confess that we do not always heed the wisdom you impact. We turn toward other marks and means of validation rather than toward you. We remain in awe of our own creation while devouring and decimating yours. Continue to call us, we pray, and to surprise and delight us at your magnificence and majesty. May we always be at awe at your glory and humbled by your nearness. Let our character be shaped toward hope and reflect your peace. And now, O oh God, hear our prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the Lord is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for us. Amen. And so now we come to our time of offering. You can leave your gifts. We've got two containers back there for United First Congregational United Church of Christ and Christ United Methodist Church. You can also go to the websites of either church and clicking on the Give button. We come to worship from what is happening in our lives to this place, this room. This room is called the sanctuary, and that is not by accident. We come to this place for sanctuary. And as Carol sings, depending on how you are, where you are, take the time to reflect in this next few minutes upon what is on your heart and mind. And if you can, offer those things to God, leaving them on the altar, so to speak, before God. Leave them with the divine. Alternately, if you are in another place in life, I encourage you within your heart to offer thanks and praise to God in gratitude for God's presence in your life. Let this be a time of pondering and reflection upon the holy. And so, giver and steward and guide, may these gifts we bring magnify beyond the boundaries of our community to create new possibilities in the world. Let us spend some time in reflection.
So let us pray. Generous, abundant, and precious God, bless our offerings of presence, ability, and resources as we participate as your co-creators to bring peace and healing to all people and creation. You hear our prayers of need and joy, and for this we are grateful. Amen. And again, please stand in body or heart for the doxology. If you turn your hymnals to page number one, we'll be singing Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise as our closing hymn. May the God of peace assure you. May the God of life invigorate you. May the God of wind direct you. Go in peace and hope to transform your community and the world to the glory of God. Worship is finished. Let our service begin. Go with God.